All right, so our first speaker today then is Tom McCurry from ZDO Tech, speaking to fieldable multiplex detection of bio threats. Tom? Yeah, do you have, I don't have control of the slides yet. It uh, looks like I have control, Tom. You have, okay. All right. Or you can take control if you want, like we did in the practice, Tom. Okay, let me take control just so. Okay, great. Right. Good afternoon. Thank you to the uh, DHS and Dawnbreaker teams for the opportunity to speak today. I'm going to talk to you about our effort under the fieldable multiplex detection of bio threats topic. There's an urgent need for the nation to be prepared to rapidly detect and respond to biological threats to the homeland. These threats may be aerosolized and consist of individual or multiple biological threats. These threats include bacterial spores, vegetative bacteria cells, viruses, and toxins. There are also emerging and bioengineered threats that are a concern. The multiplex system is useful in both detecting and warning of events and identifying agents post-event. It is simple to use, it has a very low operating cost, and can detect all the previously mentioned classes of threats. There are a diverse group of users that can benefit from the rapid, accurate identification of threats provided by the multiplex system. Some of these are first responders, and some of these are the operators of high value targets. All of them can benefit from a rapid warning of, threat, warning of threats. In addition, first responders need accurate forensic tools to evaluate incidents and support response activities. How is this done today? The current BioWatch system has triggered collections in 30 jurisdictions and public places and transit systems. When a trigger is set off, a sample is transported physically to one of the 130 laboratory response network facilities where it is processed by a trained technician and an answer is received after a period of time. These, there are significant amounts of time cost and personnel involved in using this approach. So what, what do first responders really need? You need accurate answers of a broad spectrum of biological organisms and bioactive chemicals at low cost and high speed. You need an automated system that doesn't require a scientist to operate it and maintain it. And you need a system that can adapt to emerging and bioengineered threats that is not limited by the supply chain. One of the things we're always concerned about is that, you know, as we saw with COVID, a new threat enters the country. We don't actually know how to respond to it or how to detect it initially. So threats can be actual attacks or they can just be new threats, new biological infections that have not been seen in the United States before. So our solution is the higher resolution BioTOF. The BioTOF is an automated matrix assisted laser desorption and ionization time of flight mass spectrometer or MALDI-TOF MS. I know that's a, a lot to chew on. Um, what the MALDI-TOF does is it enables the comps, com compact size of the BioTOF because what the matrix actually does is we mix matrix with the threat molecules. We hit that complex with a laser and because of the chemical interactions and the physical interactions between the matrix and the biological threat we break the threat into predictable large pieces so you could do this by simply lasing a biological molecule or a bacteria but you would get many many small fragments and you would need the mass spectrometer the size of a room what we're doing is by breaking into small pieces that are predictable well, large pieces are predictable. We can actually simplify the process of the mass spec detection, and it also makes the analytical engine more clarified, clear and easier to use. Our analytical engine can use these signatures to identify known threats and provide a warning of novel threats. The way the, this system operates is the biotroph draws in air and deposits the sample onto a, a, a metal disc. The robotic handling system within the BioTOF moves that disk into the mass spectrometer section 
where it is coated with matrix and hit by the laser. Once the fragments are produced, these fragments fly down the mass spectrometer tube, and this is where the term time of flight comes into action. When the molecule flies down the tube, large molecules fly less distance and small molecules fly farther. And by learning this relative proportion of the masses of the threat, we can identify what organism we have drawn in. The current DHS phase two funding is enabling us to increase the resolution of the system by replacing the standard ion source with a high performance ion source by modifying the power supplies and demonstrating that we can provide this multiple threats simultaneously. One of the key parts that was a goal for the DHS and this multiplex effort, you're not looking for one threat at a time, you're looking for multiple threats. There are key features, advantages, and benefits to the Biotop system. The system is automated, simple to operate, and provides detections of all agents and classes of biological threats in less than five minutes. The Biotop has the ability to detect novel and backdrop bioengineered threats. And the library of threats being identified to kind of the system can be updated by using a network push and putting new signature profiles into the system. There's no change in the operation of the system to identify a new threat. The sustainment cost is quite low at a dollar per sample, and this, this cost includes the maintenance, the consumables, and the supply chain for the end-to-end -end process. The compact size, approximately the size of a rollerboard suitcase, is easily transportable, it weighs only 60 pounds and uses only about 100 watts of power. That power can be supplied by line power or battery. The system is readily mountable in a uh, vehicle for um, field analysis. Biodetection today is conducted using the DNA amplification technique polymerase chain reaction. That chain re polymerase chain reaction requires an expensive enzyme that needs to be refrigerated throughout the process. This caused the cost of the chain to be quite a bit higher. Each test costs $183 in reagents, and that's only the reagents, plus the manpower to transport the sample to the laboratory and then conduct the analysis. The analysis is multiplexed, but only for 16 agents. In addition, those 16 agents have to be chosen beforehand. You can't identify a novel threat. You pick 16 agents, that's all you're looking for. If agent 17 is a threat that day, you won't even know it's there. So the BioTef multiplicity system by comparison has very low consumable costs of approximately two cents per sample and is automated and does not require the sample to be transported or an operator to conduct the analysis. The Biotop can detect virtually all known classes of biothreats and bioactive chemicals, including unknown and engineered threats. In our phase two effort, we are building the high performance Biotop packaged into a case to support operation in austere environments. We are testing the high performance Biotop against simulants of multiple threats. We're going to use those symptom, sim, simulus, stimulant, yeah, sorry, stimulant results to both optimize the resolution of the system and to determine better ways to do our analysis. We're going to then take those signal collection protocols into field type systems and exercise the signature, signature collection protocols. And um, we'll be conducting this both in the laboratory and outside in the field. As you can see in the figure, what we've done in this system is we've gone from a phase one test bed where it's on a large rack to a package system approximately the size of a rollerboard suitcase. And that spectrum you see on the, on the screen, this is the kind of output that the system uses for the scientist to determine how to develop the analytical engine 
in our in the case of a user, what you'll get is an answer as to what you see. Not you won't be looking to interpret this kind of a uh, spectrogram. The Montoff system has been de developed with D SBIR funding from the Department of Homeland Security and from the Department of Defense. We started out at TRL2 and uh, learned quite a bit, including how to know whether a toxin is an active toxin or not. And through the, de the cycles of funding, we have reached the point, the multiplex biotop we're talking at today, where the system is packaged and can be used readily by a first responder. We are also carrying out an experiment funded by Department of Homeland Security where the Biotoph system is placed into a, a environmental case. And this case can be uh, put out into operational systems. We just recently um, completed a field test at Naval Surf Support Center Dahlgren, where the Biotoph was placed on a barge in, a, in the Catoctin Creek. And we can actually uh, say that it, it worked exceedingly well and detected the threats that were released by the Dugway team. And those were very challenging conditions, as you can imagine, for humidity. So about Zeteo Tech. Zeteo Tech was founded in 2013 by Sykesville, Maryland. In Sykesville, Maryland, we, our goal was to develop technologies for the warfighter and homeland security. Our leadership was previously program managers at DARPA and DHS Science and Technology. We would like to hear from the first responder community about what you would need, how you would want to operate the system, what kind of reporting system would you need? Do you want the report displayed on a screen? Do you want it pushed to your network? Do you want it pushed to the cell phones of the um, of the first responders? How do you want this data spread? And we're also very interested in testing opportunities when we could take this out in operational conditions as uh, as Ms. Lang said at the opening, we are scientists, we are not first responders. So when you can help explain to us how you would use it and how you would deal with the challenges, that's an enormous help to us in developing the technology. And as a point forward, what you can see is we are actually developing the what we call the suitcase TOF. We've done some preliminary work on it and we have been shown we can make it much smaller, but that has not that effort has not been funded. So as uh, th this, this is the leadership team of detail of the tail, Dr. Wayne Bryden is our CEO and president, and I'm Tom McCurry. I'm the chief operating officer. Wayne and I were program managers together at DARPA, primarily working on chem bio defense. And Mike McLaughlin is our chief technology officer and is here with us today and will help answer any of your questions. And Mike was a program manager in DHS science and technology. The three of us are all, um, we have Wayne is a chemist, I'm a biologist, and Mike is an electrical engineer. So we believe we have a team that is very effective for this. Our team is based in Sykesville, Maryland. All of our employees are technical. We have no administrative personnel in the company. And we have a range from people from with an associate's degree in electronics to several PhDs in our in our workforce. Thank you very much, and I'd like to hear any questions.